Uh, welcome to the Web Society Meet the Manager and CEO event. Uh, Andrew Phyllis, for those of you who know me, hope. For those of you who don't, I am a regular on uh, the Test Podcast. Stuart, how do you look back over our Premier Sports Cup campaign? Obviously, we've, we've progressed to the group stage and heading off into the knockout stage as well. And how challenging do you find the format of playing competitive games with a, a lot of guys who have perhaps only just arrived at the club? I think um, I think the most important part, obviously, is to to get through the cup competition. I'm sure everyone will agree with that. Um, but I think everyone can see the wee bit of raw emotion from me yesterday. Uh, quite simply, I didn't feel the the performance was good enough. Um, you know, we can sit and justify that for a number of different reasons. Uh, we can sit and try and make an excuse that it's okay we got through the cup competition, but quite simply, I expect better from my team, but from this football club. I think it's I think it's really difficult to, uh, to attract players. Uh, I've went on record many times, and I think hopefully we all understand that we, we certainly don't sit in the top uh, the top tier of what we can finance towards players. In fact, you know, last season without question we sat in the in the bottom two. Um, but I think what you do through time is when you start to see player development and player growth. Um, it helps us in the loan market, undoubtedly. Um, I think the likes of uh, Theo Bear, Kevin Van Veen start to help us in the striker position because we can sort of sell that story of success here. But I think again, important in this room, we don't just sell the strikers that have worked under me, we sell the strikers that have worked at this football club for many a year and I could start rhyming every one of them off. It'll be heroes within this room. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly aware of that history and what these guys have done. Um, but I need to try and showcase the number nine jersey or that striker position really means something at this football club because we've had some of the top goal scorers in the top flight, which is an amazing achievement for Motherwell. Um, and, and so again, it's just trying to build that story. If we can get that success with the loan deals, the Brody Spencers, Georgie Jens, uh, uh, Mika Birev, who's just went to Stum Graz for four million euros, if we can get that success, it starts to help us progress that, that, that process. What was kind of the, the first thing that struck you upon arriving at Motherwell to identify what we could be doing out, what else we could be doing moving club formal? I mean, I've said this before, but you know, during my previous time in Scottish football, I've always regarded Motherwell as a top six club that we're always pushing for playing in Europe, etc., etc. You start to look at the, the map at the top of the stairs that shows all the places we're playing in Europe. For me, you know, there are so many, so much potential in this football club. For, even from a fan base point of view, you know, one of the first things I looked at was a date place. You know, we've got something ridiculous like 9,000 people with an MLO postcode who have not got a season ticket, who have been at games in the last couple of years. You know, if we could get 10% of them, 20% of them back on a more regular basis, it would make such a difference to the football club and, and to Stuart and the budget. Um, as a result, there's so much going on at the club, too, if I'm honest, that there's so many ideas and things and thoughts in my head about just slight changes that we can do um, to, to make things better. For me, we're a fan of the club, we're very much at the heart of the community, but as an outsider coming in here, I thought, why does nobody shout about that? Nobody actually puts that in people's faces. So the people of, of, the, of the county of the Atlanta who actually realise we how community driven we are. You will not get a more community driven football club with the work that goes on in the community trust. Um, with the fact we're far owned, you know, it's all a case of we've got a joined up thinking and putting everything together. I've said that before as well, that you know, we've got the outside the board, we've got the fans, we've got the football club. We need to all just work together to try and make things better. Just that we, we kind of touched on the, the, the players arriving early, Stuart, as well, but along the same sort of lines of Theo Bear, is there someone that you've spotted in the first sort of four, five, six weeks that you've had them in the club? that may kind of surprise people and surpass maybe expectations that they've had uh, with the, the new boys coming in? I think, I think it's a really difficult question. I, I believe in every single player uh, that we've brought into the football club. You know, whether you've seen the best of them now, I would suggest nobody's going in. You know, we just spoke about big feel there and, and sometimes that can take time. Um, but I do absolutely believe in every one of them. Each one's been profiled to, to play in our team for a specific reason. We know what they're about. We've spent a lot of time tracking every single one of them, to be honest with you. There's been a hell of a lot of work that's went into that. 
Um, I, I think probably where I would flip it to is that I've, I've been really pleasantly surprised with some of our younger guys. Um, so I think we always lead towards the new players that come in the door. Um, I think organically that will start to take shape, and actually that starts to take shape with the work that's done. Um, but I, I would have to lean towards um, the likes of Hugh Wilson, for example, yeah. coming in on that left-hand side. So again, we talk about this loan system um, that I find difficult sometimes because I believe that I give the young players a chance to another football clubs, which I have done at times when you feel you're bringing in some good quality. I think if you tumble down the divisions, Sometimes we need this loan system for some of our young players because jumping from under 18s to the first team is an astronomical jump. Now, young Len has done it manfully, he's done it incredibly well, um, he's done it so well. But then you look at the likes of you, he's had a tough loan. He's been out playing the junior football for a short spell and won a league and won a cup in there, which has been a brilliant experience for him. Um, and now he comes back and now he really starts to show me signs of somebody that can play in our team on a regular basis. Again, that walk that's down to him to keep his standards high. Um, and Dylan Wells is probably the other one I would throw in there that's had a real good impact on our team. Ball carrier, uh, someone that's got good pace and can probably excite the crowd. Um, so I know we're talking about nine new faces, um, but especially for me, I'm really, really pleased to see these guys pushing themselves right in that mix and in that bracket. Um, again, a lot of people agree or disagree. If you look through my history, it's been something that's massive to me that we try and promote our own players. I'll give an opportunity when I see it's fit. I've, I've always had a really good relationship with the outside the board. Hopefully, the ones that guys are here today will want to echo that. You know, I speak to them, members of the board, probably every day of the week, and being on both boards it's, or being involved with both. I feel like. Um, as I said, I've said from day one, this club needs a reset. Now, since the decision was made by Eric to pull in the investment two weeks ago, or whatever that was, it's time for the reset. Um, we had a meeting two weeks ago last Thursday, a week ago last Thursday, with the Web Society Board, and I think there's so many ideas we've got to work together going forward. Um, that's quite a straightforward one for me, that we just put it all together, which hopefully I can, I can do quite easily. Before, but I felt it was a, a lot of ignorance towards the roles of the executive board and the Royal Society. It's caused a lot of friction in recent months, uh, and I was just wondering is it worthwhile clarifying the, the positions of the two bodies, like sort of publicly, so that people know exactly how they operate, uh, and maybe as there plans are fit to change those roles in the future? I think um, the way it runs is the exec board kind of on the club. But they don't really, if you know what I mean. That's what I've been funny about it. Myself and, and David Lindsay's finance director, we're here day to day. We basically run the football club, obviously in conjunction with the football staff. Um, the board assists where it is and when required, but for me there needs to be more linkage with the Well Society Board. Um, the Well Society Board have given up enormous amounts of time especially in the last number of months. The work that they've done behind the scenes is quite phenomenal. The time they've given up has been quite a commitment for them all. But now, you know, as I said earlier, we can now channel their work into utilising their skills and their local knowledge to try and more or less help me more than anything else. We try to make things better and try and get some of the people back that I spoke about earlier. Um, but obviously Jim said he's, he's going to retire, so I think that will happen within time. And specifically to Brian, do you see us still being at Fir Park medium to the long term? Probably yes, unless we can find another one. <laughs> Heaven knows so many field bears. I really appreciate your, uh, your kind words, first and foremost. Um, from, from my side, yeah, I think the, the, the what we always want to do, I think just naturally as human beings, is we want to try and please everyone. That's just always the, the natural thing. We know we're never going to do that. But I think the ideal scenario is uh, that we have a, a group of players out on that pitch that really represent this football club to the absolute best of their ability. Um, the results are, of course, always important, as like I've already mentioned. 
Um, I think that probably, just going back to one of the earlier points as well, is I, I think that what we can always relate to is following that journey, you know, from one of our own, you know, one of the guys that came through this football club that have maybe been on the scrap heap or somebody that's come through our academy. So I genuinely feel that at times going and playing against the, the inevitable uh, difficulties that we get in this division, playing against some of the big guns and some of the tough venues, I think it's just having that team to be proud of. That's something I do genuinely strive for every day. I do genuinely strive to make it in such a way where it's entertaining and enjoyable for the supporters. I, I, I do strive to try and entertain with the team that's there. And I always want the team to be a, a fair reflection of me as a person. I love this job. I love this football club. I, it really has got under my skin in terms of uh, the affection for it. I know I'm not a former player or someone that's spent decades here. I have done it at a, a previous club. Um, but when you come into a place like this, it, it really does start to grasp you. And that's not just a appease people, it's genuinely the way that it starts to become. So I would love um, everyone to be sitting here and the next time we have one of these events that we're not off the back of performance yesterday, um, that we're striving for that top six position where a lot of the Rhone Academy graduates and we're, we're pushing towards cup finals and, and, and European competition. Really difficult to get there, but I gen genuinely believe we've got that type of capability. A big thanks to everyone for attending the event and a very particular thanks to both Stuart and Brian for giving them a quick <laughs> It's obviously been an incredibly busy few months for the Royal Society and I'd like to thank all involved in the room and uh, all involved, particularly from the, the, the board and all the, the box students that have been working on that as well. They all deserve a, a huge amount of credit for what has been a, a huge and tumultuous time for the football club so I'd just like a quick round of applause for those guys as well. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the Welsh Society members who joined us here at Fur Park in the Centenary Suite tonight for our Meet the Manager event. It was brilliant to be joined by Stuart Kettlewell and uh, Brian Caldwell. To have the manager and the chief executive here and for them to be so engaged around all the questions you're asked was amazing. And I'd also like to thank those from the Heritage Trail, the Supporters Liaison Officers, the Motherwell FC Community Trust and the former players who joined us here this evening. It was great to have their support and I know that there were a lot of really worthwhile conversations between Welsh Society members and all four of those key parts of our club.